the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School gunman, who killed 14 students and three staff members in 2018, told his brother's roommate Richard Moore during a video visit in jail that he missed Linda Cruz, 68, who died of pneumonia in November 2017, but got a sick chuckle out of the souvenir he left at her grave. Nicholas Cruz said that he misses his stepmother and laughs at the fact that he left his Donald Trump mega hat on her grave, according to a transcript of the conversation obtained by Local 10 News. The revelation came the same day a neighbor testified that his stepmom was terrified of him because of his explosive temper. Jurors were shown photos of damage that he did to the family home during one of his violent tantrums. They will decide whether he spends the rest of his life in prison or gets the death penalty. Parkland High School shooter, Nicholas Cruz, 23, seen here firing off a few rounds while wearing a mega hat Linda Cruz, pictured here with a baby Nicholas, adopted him after she had several miscarriages the gunman knew his adoptive mother was a liberal anti-type gun type, the Miami Herald previously reported, and he placed the hat in her casket to spite her. Due to the fact that his mother hated Donald Trump he put it in her casket with her when she died and took a picture of her with the hat, the friend, Hunter McCutcheon, told a detective, the paper reported. He later asked Patricia Devaney Westerlined, a neighbor of the Cruises who repeatedly had video visits with the gunman this year, to go to the grave and retrieve the hat. Cruz told her to remove the mega hat he left since he knew his mother would not like it in there, according to summaries of conversations he had with the neighbor. Jurors were shown shirtless photos of Cruz sporting a mega hat with a handgun that he raised and fired for target practice. It's not clear if that is the same hat that he put at the grave. The seven-man, five-woman jury will decide whether he is sentenced to death or life without parole. They must be unanimous to impose a death sentence. Cruz watched his adopted father die from a heart attack before his sixth birthday and soon after started exhibiting violent and troubled behavior. He started killing frogs, squirrels, and other animals. He would sneak into his neighbor's yard and try to get their dogs to attack their potbelly pigs, according to the Washington Post. The seven-man, five-woman jury will decide whether Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooter Nicholas Cruz will be sentenced to death or life without parole neighbor Paul Gould testified that Linda Cruz, the gunman's adoptive mother, was afraid of his temper Linda Cruz was afraid of her son, another neighbor Paul Gould testified but still took him to the gun world of South Florida so that he could get an AK-47 rifle when he turned 18. She told me she was scared of him, Gold said. She told me not to believe the nice appearance he had and angelic ways and that he would turn and do bad things. And she was a little afraid of him at some times. Aside from his posthumous prank with the mega hat, jurors were shown photos of damaged walls punched by Nicholas and his brother Zachary Cruz, according to The Independent. There was a cracked mirror and a damaged bathroom wall. Gold told the jurors that Cruz would have episodes, according to the news publication, saying it was almost like it was another person who had done it. Cruz, appearing here shirtless in a mega hat, apparently asked a neighbor to remove a similar hat that he had placed in the grave of his adoptive mother Cruz, pictured here in a mega hat, is said to have placed a mega hat in the grave of his adoptive mother. It's unclear if it's the same hat he would be very nice and pleasant to people and wanting to be nice to people and then another moment he would lose his temper and break things and seem out of his mind, he said. Then when he calmed down you could see that he really was apologetic, almost like it was another person who had done it. It wasn't just neighbors who saw the warning signs before the mass slaughter at the Parkland, Florida high school. During his middle school years, Nicholas Cruz frequently cursed at teachers and made threats, and his drawings of gunshot victims were so disturbing that one teacher kept them for years, turning them over to authorities immediately after the massacre. During cross-examination of a former special education counselor who worked with Cruz from 6th through 8th grade, prosecutor Jeff Marcus showed Jessica Clark Flournoy page after page of incident reports filed by Westlade's middle school teachers. Cruz called girls and female teachers derogatory names, interrupted lessons and dashed from classrooms, according to the reports, which noted that teachers repeatedly called campus security about his behavior. Under questioning from Cruz attorney Tamara Curtis, Flournoy said she was never made aware of the teachers' reports. 
Jurors were showed this photo of a mirror cracked by gunman Nicholas Cruz inside the family home during one of his tantrums. The bathroom wall inside the home of Nicholas Cruz, which was damaged during one of his outbursts, it would have been helpful, she said. But Marcus also showed Florinoy notes from one of her own meetings with Cruz during which he told her that if the ship was going down, he wanted to be known for something. I guess he is now, right? Marcus asked drawing a quick objection from Cruz S. attorneys that Circuit Judge Elizabeth Scherer upheld. His public defenders are in their second week of presenting testimony about Cruz S. troubled life from his birth to a crack-addicted, hard-drinking prostitute who put him up for adoption to a childhood fraught with emotional and psychological problems that witnesses said were never adequately addressed. The defense strategy is aimed at counteracting the emotional, gruesome, and graphic evidence and testimony the prosecution presented over three weeks as it laid out the killings and how Cruz planned the attack. Flournoy testified that when she initially met with Cruz in sixth grade, he tried hard to get good grades, behave and make friends, but he struggled. Cruz, who was diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, had trouble focusing and staying organized, she said. Flournoy said Cruz was extremely anxious, something elementary teachers also said in earlier testimony, and feared other students would discover he was doing poorly. She said when teachers returned homework and tests, he would quickly stuff the papers into his backpack without looking so no one else would see. He was embarrassed to raise his hand to get help, so Flournoy and his teachers devised a system where he would place a blue note card on his desk when he needed assistance. She said by 8th grade, she knew his conduct had deteriorated, he was escorted by staff to class and accompanied by them at lunch, and at one point destroyed a bathroom sink. But Florney said she did not know the full extent of Cruz's conduct until Marcus brought out the incident reports. And she said she did not remember ever being told that one Westlake's teacher feared Cruz so much that she would not have him in her classroom unless an assistant principal or behavior specialist was present. Flournoy also said she never knew about the drawings of gunshot victims that a teacher kept. Marcus then asked her to read aloud some entries from the reports. They included, instead of completing a vocabulary assignment, Cruz drew stick figures with genitalia and of people shooting each other on the worksheet. During lessons about the Civil War, Cruz became overly excited by President Abraham Lincoln's assassination, asking did the gunshots go pop, pop, pop really fast and was there blood everywhere? When discussing soldiers killed during the war, he asked, did they eat them? One teacher reported that Nicholas will find any excuse to bring up shooting guns or violence. When a student in that class wrote that Jesus was his hero, Cruz yelled out an obscenity. When told he would need to have security escort him to the bathroom, he replied that he hated the guards and I hope they die, then swore. During a discussion about a book, he told the class he disliked it, but I like guns. He then disrupted the class by tossing paper balls, cursing and throwing a pen cap and a pencil sharpener at other students. In one class, he stood up and flashed his middle finger at another student. When the teacher picked up the phone to call security, he rushed over and grabbed it. When the teacher told the student to go to another class and asked the teacher to call security, Cruz banged the receiver against the phone several times and then bolted from the room. During class, Cruz claimed he was bored and began blowing a party horn. When the teacher asked him to hand it over, he broke it. Cruz was eventually sent to a school for students with emotional and behavioral problems before he was allowed to attend Stoneman Douglas. He was expelled from the high school a year before the shooting. He was never committed to a mental hospital, 